On the previous episode of Pain Society, we took on this Honda Civic Type R that had some damage in the front fender and bumper cover. We started the initial teardown process to see what kind of damage and if we had any frame damage to the vehicle. Now once we determined that we're just going to replace the parts, then we went ahead and removed all the parts that blocked the fender and then removed the fender itself. At this point it was time to check out the new OEM parts and test fit those parts onto the vehicle to make sure we had proper fitment before we start the prep process. Now that everything's fit nice and snug, it's time to start the prepping process. And that's just what we're gonna do in this episode. Welcome back to Paint Society. Now in this episode, we're gonna continue our work on our Project Honda Civic Type R. Now in the first episode, you saw us doing all the test fitting and making sure that all of our panels lined up. Now in this episode, we're gonna show you the color matching and why do I take the fender, paint it off the car, then put it on the car, and then repaint it. I'm gonna explain that all to you now, but let's go back into the body shop and show you how we prep that fender. So we're gonna go ahead and check the paint code now on most Japanese or Honda Acura cars. It'll be right here uh, on this sticker and it's B593M. So what we can do from this point is we'll take that over to the computer in the body shop and we'll mix the paint up right now. So in my system, when I pull up this paint code, it's got like one, two, three, four, five, six different variants. So what I'm gonna do, I can see that we've used uh, this variant three times. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull the chip and see if it looks pretty close and then we'll do a spray out and see if it's the color we wanna use. Now I went ahead and pulled the deck and this is the variant that we have. Now we're gonna check this against the car and see if it matches good enough to do a spray out card. You're gonna wanna make sure you bring something like this as a cheap Astro light that will show you what the sun is going to do to the color, all right? Obviously at this point, we don't have any sun and we're not gonna wait all day for the sun to come out. So something handy just like this will give us a good idea. Now it's never a good idea really to check color in a shop under fluorescent lights. Um, it's actually a pretty bad idea, but if you have something like this, you can get a good idea if the color is gonna match well. So looking at it, we bring it against the car. It's not perfect, uh, but it's good enough for me to do a spray out card. So we'll do a spray out card of this one and we'll check to see if it's good enough. If not, then we'll pull the other variants and we'll go from there. When I pull up that mix, it gives me all these toners that I need to mix to make that particular color. So these are the toners, right? It's kind of like when you go to the store, uh, Home Depot, they pull a whole bunch of different toners. Of course, that might be by a machine that automatically does it. So each one of these gets measured on a scale and uh, the scale will tell me exactly how much I need to put in. So it's very fine uh, uh, measurements. So we don't want to go over. So you want to maybe just drop it in if it's a little bit out of time. And this is painstaking. I mean, it does take time, but you don't want to over mix because then you can throw off the whole mix and if you need to add more toners then well it just ranks up more paint than you need and you don't want to do that so 190 would be my next toner so i'll just come in here and pick up 190 and then of course i'll just mix it up so i'll do this for the whole entire mix and then it will give me a color it's pretty fascinating all the different um toners that go into a particular mix to give it the, uh, the color you're looking for. And these are all the toners. Now I only mixed up seven ounces because you need to have a mix minimum. I don't wanna over mix it in case this is the wrong color. That would be just wasting money. So at this time we can go ahead and put our top on and then we'll send it to the mixer. So this is a spray out card. It's pretty much a thin piece of uh, metal and uh, we're gonna be doing the spray out on this and then going to the car to compare it. Well, we have it all based out. Now, one thing I do wanna mention is the undercoat. The undercoat will greatly affect the color now this color right here is a medium gray and it's the same exact color sealer that I plan to put on the fender, which is 
why I didn't seal it. Now, if I had planned to use a different color sealer on the fender when I go to paint it, then in that case, what I would have done is sealed it first in this color to get the true color. Now, another tip that you're gonna to wanna to follow is do not use your wax and grease remover to get the color. I'm gonna tell you why. You're not gonna get the true color unless you clear it. So let's go and do that now. Once that spray card is relatively dry, you can go over to the car now. Now taking a look at our color, we can see it's a much better color match than that little chip, which is why I prefer to do the actual spray out. Then we're coming up here and looking here, it's not too bad. Now, the real test is when we put the color on the fender, because I, I do like this fender. I do feel like it's gonna blend well. I don't think it's gonna be the perfect butt match and well, no real color with metallic or darker light shade is gonna be a good butt match, except for maybe black. But um, this is definitely good enough to get on the fender and test it out and see how well it's going to look for our blends. So we're using the Easy Flex stand to mount our fender. And I love about it is we can get to all the different areas from the inside of the fender all the way down. This particular one uses the alligator clips and we can see that we'll get paint everywhere we need. Now, let me show you how to prep it. There's a couple ways to do it, but the easiest and most efficient is to use a maroon scuff pad and some scuffing paste and clean it all down and then dry it off and we'll send it into the booth. But the first thing I wanna do is I wanna get all my main surfaces sanded with a 320 grit. Make sure I have that good bite for the sealer. We wanna put sealer over there because the sealer is going to make sure that I get good coverage for my blue, especially blue. And well, it's gonna give me good adhesion and stone chip prevention. After the DA, we're gonna have areas the DA just can't get to. So that's when we'll use our maroon scuff pad in conjunction with our scuffing paste, right? So this is scuffing paste is kind of a little abrasive, but it cleans. And that's what I love about it, is it cleans as you get your surface ready so you don't have any sort of contaminants. So what I like to do first is I'll go around dry and because I can visually see it, right? I like doing dry, I can visually see am I scuffing or not. And then what I'll do is I'll just use some water to go ahead and uh, get everything nice and clean. Now I'm always gonna recommend to blow dry your parts. We don't know what's in this water, what the city puts in the water, does it have chlorine in it or any other additives uh, that can sit and dry on the panel. Let's get it off before it actually dries. Remember when we talked about that sealer color? Well, this is gonna be our sealer color that we're going to mix up and they're very, very similar. This is what's gonna go on the fender first before the blue paint. And to get that, the computer is going to give us the exact mix of black and white to get that exact tone. This is Color Build Sealer, also known as Wet on Wet Primer in different countries. And that's our sealer color right here. We'll use the 3M Performance gun. I do have a 1.2 on it. That'll be just fine for spraying sealer. I like this gun for little knickknack things just like this. Now, after you've cleaned it with your water base and your prep cleaner, then you can go ahead and use a tack rag just to get the remaining lint or any debris off. We're now set to spray on our sealer. Now one coat of sealer is all you'll need. You can see it's flashing off and it's getting dull. And by painting the fender off the car initially, we're able to get to all these areas, especially with the stand. It makes it super, super simple. Now, you're gonna see how easy it is to cover with this sealer when we put down the blue. Now, blue's very transparent, so we might have up to three coats just to get full coverage.
After three coats, it's got full coverage and now it's ready for its clear coat. Now we're just gonna put on one nice coat of clear coat because it will be sanded back down and we will be re-blending it once it's on the car. After one coat of clear, we'll go ahead and let this dry and then we'll pop it on the car. We'll see how our color looks. Now the next morning, it's all dry, so let's go check it out and see how it looks after it's all been cured. So it still has a good shine. Only did one coat. We don't need to build it up too much. Let's get this unhooked and let's put it on the car and see how the color looks. So we'll pop it on here for good. Now on the fender, I like to get everything by hand first. That way we don't strip anything. And then you can usually line your fender up by looking at the paint marks, right? Where does it line up before, where was there overspray? And then you can go ahead and just give it a little tighten. For those tough areas, we're using a wrench just like this. Well, it ratchets right here and uh, it's reversible too. So you can get into these little tight areas and get them nice and tight without having to worry about hitting any of the paint. We got the fender all on now. It looks pretty, pretty close, but we can do a million spray out cards and until we actually get the color on the panel and see how it looks according to the other panels, then we could tell, hey, you know what? It's just a tad lighter, still a very blendable color, but will I, what I will tell you is once I go to mix up more of this color for blending, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add just a touch more black just to make sure that the color looks that much more seamless. Now, where do we go from here after we mix our paint? Well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna scuff up our panels, our hood and our door and our A-pillar, but before we do all that, let me talk to you a little bit about how we clean the car, which is the most important part before we prep. Now that we got the car back into the body shop, the most overlooked step in any process of sanding is cleaning. I'm gonna show you how to clean first before you sand. You see, if you don't clean properly, you're gonna be sanding all those oils contaminants right into the paint. So this step will take a little bit longer because it has to dry or you have to blow dry it before you sand it. But I like to use a degreaser. Now this is a foaming degreaser. You can use any degreaser you want. So I'll wash the car down and then I'll use the foaming degreaser, rub it in, get everything I need clean and then rinse it back off, dry it. And then I'll be ready for the sanding stage. It goes something just like this. I like the foam because you can see where it goes and it really helps to eliminate and dissolve a lot of the surface contamination. You know, sometimes that first uh, pass with your sandpaper is gonna pick up a lot of debris and well, you'll need a couple pieces of paper just to get down to the actual clear coat. So this will eliminate that step. Now you don't wanna miss especially the areas behind the wheel because that's where all that tire dressing is really gonna kick up. And obviously the wheel itself is very important. Inside the fender liner, these are all areas where, well, we want our paint to stick and also our tape. So even the window everywhere, I'll even do this back door a little bit just to make sure the surfaces where we're at are clean. Then we'll just activate it a little bit and get all of the loose grime removed from the panel itself. Look at all that nastiness just looking to contaminate our paint. Sorry, not on this paint job. That's a surface I much rather sand. It's not gonna clog up my sandpaper or I'm not gonna contaminate by rubbing even more contaminants into the surface. Now, you can see my color's not really, really perfect. Well, I went back into the system. I found another variant that does take 
some of our black toner and I mixed that up and I compared it on the spray out card and I like that variant just a little bit better. So that's the one we're going to be using to blend. Now, no color is ever perfect, so that's why we're going to be blending. Now, we blend to the hood. We're only going to be blending the first half area. We're not going to take color all the way over. Whether there's damage or not, what it's written for is the estimate is to just blend here for color match. We're going to do a blend up the A-pillar, and then we'll do a blend into our door. Let's talk about how we prep it for our blend coat. So for sanding, we're going to be using a K600 which has the cutting speed of a P320, but it will leave a 600 grit scratch. So we're gonna start with that. We're gonna use the K600 to really get everything nice and chalked up to kind of dig into the paint a little bit. And then we'll finish it up with the K800, which we'll refine it a little bit more. That way we can go a little bit further on our edges and it'll give it a smoother finish. So when our paint lays on it, we'll have a nice clean finish. Now, this is the uh, interface pad we're going to be using. It's a slim one. I'll not mark everything in the description so you know exactly what we're using, along with the DA sander. Now, this is a 3 uh, stroke DA. You can use a 3 seconds uh, for finishing as well. This will be just a touch bit faster. I would probably recommend a 3 seconds on probably a silver because it will leave a much finer scratch. Now, as far as where you start, it doesn't really matter. You just gotta be careful. You don't burn through your edges. So I'm gonna stay off of all of my edges. I'm gonna use the 600 really on the flat areas and then I'll use my 800 around the edges as well as my gray scuff pad. With that short pass, you can see how we really stay off of those edges. We'll do those later. We don't want to burn through because if we burn through, then we're going to have to put color here. And then we know our color can be different from our fender. So we just want to have clear in this section. So what I'll do is I'll do that 600 on the hood, fender, and door. So let's speed things up. And that's as far as I want to go with the 600. You can see we still have some shiny spots over on all of our edges. That's just what we want. We don't want that 600 to burn through our edge because then, like I said before, we'd have to put color there. So we're not too concerned with a little bit of still shiny spots and you see our orange peel isn't completely leveled. Did you notice I don't take my 600 all the way to the end? I don't want to. I don't want to burn through here. If I burn through here, I'm going to paint this back door. We don't want that. So we'll lightly take our 800 to this area and then we'll just hit this all up by hand because with the hand, we know we can control it. Same thing over here. This is a small area that we're gonna do a blend on and we're just gonna make sure that we just do that with 800 grit. That K800 will help smooth out the rest of this and then we'll go around to all of our shiny spots. After that K800, it's going to be a lot smoother. A lot smoother means a nicer smooth paint laying down. And we can see we still have some of our shiny edges. And that's exactly what we want because this is a gray scuff pad. It's a flex pad. All right. It's thinner because it's easier to get into those tight areas. Now, this is equivalent to 800. And we're just going to let the pad do the work. So, for instance, we're just going to kind of give medium pressure. And all we're looking to do is dole up the surface. That's the same thing with the whole hood. We're not looking to flatten it out. We just want to take our little shiny spots and we want to make them dull. And what this is doing is it's getting the paint prepared for, well, new paint to lay on top because, well, clear coat or any paint is not going to stick to shiny paint, all right? And it's the same thing over here. We're just gonna go over our edges. We don't want to burn through, so we're just letting the scuff pad do the work. And what I like about a scuff pad is it really gets deep into all those little crevices, right? So it's gonna go into any of that peel and it's gonna smooth it out and dole it up a little bit and get it ready once again for whatever surface material you plan on putting it on. And that's why I say the door area and the edge of the door for hand because, well, we just can't control that DA. And sometimes, although we have our best intentions, it's still burned through. So just play it safe. It's not all about speed. It's about efficiency and accuracy, 
And that's what we plan to do here, just giving a nice scuff up on all of our edges. Once it's all scuffed up, I'll take that same scuff pad, it's still got some life on it, and I'll use a prep and scuff cleaner. And this is, has little abrasives in it, and it also continues to clean. So when we have these two together with some water, we can continue to get that final cleaning, and this is gonna pull all that dust out of all those crevices. It's gonna leave a nice sheen finish ready for paint. And that's gonna wrap up episode two on how to properly prep your paint for a paint job and basic color matching. Now, when this is all dry, it will have a nice even sheen to it. And that even sheen is a good indication that it is ready to receive a new coating. Now, I hope you learned something in this episode. And if you wanna support the channel and get merch just like this, head over to paintsocietystore.com. And as always, don't forget our Instagram where you can get a lot of answers to your questions, paint.society. And in the meantime, this is Brian from Paint Society reminding you, don't overthink it, it's just paint. I'll see you guys on episode three.